thank you for joining us on the third episode of a fascinating set of conversations with empowered women of goa it is a pleasure and honor to uh, meet with these amazing phenomenal women speak to them about their life and their work here in goa today i would love to introduce you to somebody who has been referred to as the ambassador of goan music to the world it is about empowered women and yes it is about empowered women in goa it is a big bit of the way we see life and culture here in goa like we said they define the culture the ethos of the society we have with us sonia shersat uh, the fadishta who has made goa so popular across the world yes she sings in 16 languages and yes she is this warm wonderful goan personality thank you sonia for joining thank us you, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's exciting to talk to you about music it is exciting to talk to you about a wonderful uh, two decade long journey in music yeah, yeah. um i do know that you have bagged an in international award for your speaking and your communication skills much before you became a professional singer and now the world knows sonia shirsat as the this powerful amazing beautiful voice that's making goa so popular to the rest of the world tell us about this little journey where did it start how did it start um my journey of singing started in ponda because i am from ponda yeah. and um i started i think the first time i went on stage i was about 8 years old nice. and uh, it was this um sarvajanik ganesh utsav where you have this huge pandal next to the the deity and um it's like a week long program there and one of the evenings was a musical evening so there was a band called ponda boys <laughs> that was performing and i was the little 7 or 9 year old little one um this was uh, the movie kayamat se kayamat tak had just been released okay. amir khan joey chawla nadeem shravan were making udit narayan okay. were making their uh, first major steps in their career and papa kehte hain was the song yes. from that movie that i sang with the band okay. yeah wow. so yeah the, the singing journey started from there um uh, but then for a very long time it was more into competitions and uh, uh within the school or inter school uh, events um till uh i finished my graduation in commerce then i went to do my bachelor's in law and i used to come to panjim salgaonkar college that's when a band called status four from margaon asked me to join them and uh, 2002 so i was 22 and i joined the band and i'm still with the band uh, oh, it's yeah. it's yeah it's 20 20 21st year going on right nice. now yeah and uh, that's how the professional singing started uh, fadu came in later so i yeah. sang with the band first and then the fadu started so that journey is uh, fascinating for us Uh, from singing papa kehte hai yes. <laughs> at age 8 9 on yeah. a little stage in ponda to becoming the fadishta of the world uh, how did that bit start um so when i was 20 i think 20 there was this competition called french nightingale by alliance française that used to happen annually and uh, i won it uh, at the goa level and then i was in the top 5 of india so i was sent to uh, france for a month that was the prize uh, i came back and then i joined the law bachelor's of law um and subsequently i saw an advertisement in the newspaper uh, saying that there was going to be a competition called venkantar by fundasauri and then rosary college a portuguese singing competition so you know um, i always say the only vice i had in my life were competitions okay. yeah so if there was one competition i had one i wanted to win another one so i had already done it in french now portuguese was the next and mind you till then i wasn't singing in portuguese okay. yeah i um now i do yeah, okay. so yeah okay. even at that i didn't i would understand a little bit because i'd heard it in a part of my family yeah. but uh, but i wouldn't uh, make the effort to speak the language it was uh, the, the grammar is too complicated um and uh, so then i went into this competition called venkantar and uh, i sang a portuguese song mind you not a fado and uh, and i won it and uh, that's how actually the journey started because the director of the sound orient dr sesh mascarenhas at that time um he liked the song that i chose and the way i sang so when a portuguese guitarist uh, had come to goa meshtan tonchain through from the sound 
uh, to organize a Portuguese guitar workshop. So he was teaching the musicians to play the instrument called the Portuguese guitar, which is quite different from the normal guitar. Uh, at the end of the workshop, all the students were going to have a concert, which is, which is usual. Uh, so at this concert, he wanted somebody to sing. And since I had just won the competition, the prior uh, competition, um, the director asked me to sing a fadu. So I had to learn my first fadu for that, that little uh, concert after the workshop. And this gentleman heard my voice and then he told me that I had a voice for the fadu. Okay. That is when I say for the first time in my life, I was already 23, yeah. first time in my life somebody gave me some sort of a direction as yes. to what my voice was for and then I went into it. Do you think that, that it is fate, destiny, magic, what is it? Or is it just you doing your bit um, and then the right direction kind of opening up? I think it's, it's, it's meant to be. Yes. What's more important is that you take the clue. Yes. Um, I mean, the gentleman could have said that to me and I could have said, oh, forget it, who's going to, you know, let me continue with pop music or, you know, with parts which are easier, yeah. with parts that uh, have precedent, with parts where I can uh, listen to somebody or copy somebody or, you know, follow somebody's footsteps. Uh, so it's, it's all there. It, the, the, the opportunities, the avenues are there. You have to uh, take the clue and, and, and pursue them, pursue Absolutely. them. And then... Once you pursue something, be dedicated. Yes. That's important. Yes. Do you experience and experiment with other forms of uh, music and singing? Uh, yes, I do. Fadu is, of course, now my forte. It's, yeah. it's become my identity. identity. Yeah. But uh, as I said, I started off with the band Status Four. Yeah. So I was singing pop nice. with the band. I was singing ballroom dance music. I was singing uh, a lot of Konkani uh, music. Uh, along with Status 4, I think within six months of joining Status 4, uh, there was another group called Bhangra Lengoy, which is by Dr. Purnanan Chari. So this is a program of Goan cultural dances as well as uh, singing. So there's choreography. So while we sing, the dancers perform. There are folk dances, there are choreographed dances as well. Uh, so I was a um, uh, founder member of that group as well. So. Uh, so there was Konkani music there. It was totally different from Fadu or, or pop, English pop. Uh, and then, um, of course, I've sung with, uh, I've sung, as I said, in Hindi. Um, I do experiment other stuff. I've sung guzzles, I've sung, I mean, once you're into music, you know, there is no, there's no boundary. But um, musically, I've also uh, experimented with uh, different voice registers. So, for example, in general, I would be a, um, a low voice register or an alto, if you want to call it that. Um, and then there's also this soprano, which is a, a head voice, which, um, which I have experimented with. So it's, it's actually a totally different um, uh, department okay. as far as our singers are concerned. Explain that to us. What do you uh, mean? It's first and foremost that the tone of the voice is different. Yeah. Secondly, the technique of singing is different. Uh, the preparation required is different. So usually a soprano voice is a cultivated voice, is a cultured voice, is a, is a, is a trained voice. Uh, whereas alto need not, I mean, uh, the alto that I sing, the folk that I sing, the folk voice, need not be a, a, a trained voice, you know, because that's how the folk sang, you know. So whether it is mando or dulpods, or it, sorry, if it's dulpods or it is fadu, um, it is an untrained voice that's required. Uh, whereas if you sing a soprano piece, you need to uh, have these voice exercises, you need to train and tap a particular section or a, a tonality you know, in your voice that you require for that singing. So that started very late, that started when I was already 30 years old. Yeah. So till then I, didn't, I never tapped that voice. And uh, so it's, it's like if you are in, uh, in management. I'll give you this okay. example, you're in management and all of a sudden you're taken and put into sales and marketing. Okay. You know, okay. the difference there. Here yes. you, you're used to sitting in one place and getting your job done yeah. and then all of a sudden you have to go out into oh, the market okay. and, you know, okay. chase, yeah. You dead. It. <laughs> yeah, so it's that sort of, it's like total different uh, arena. Yeah. Perfect. Tell us about that journey of wh why did you feel that it's important? Was it about saying that I would like to propagate uh, Indo-Portuguese or go in culture and or was it about the father and saying that how can I make sure that many others learn how to sing it? 
So my journey with Fadu has always been a journey with a musical genre. Uh, the love that I have for the Fadu is for the music itself. It happens to be sung in Portuguese. Yeah. If it was sung in any other language, the love would have been the same. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I've always made that clear. Uh, and what happened was when I started singing the Fadu in 2003 onwards, uh, usually whenever there was any event where the, there was an opportunity to sing a few fadus, uh, the audience was the same, yeah. I would say, yeah. quite the same, you know. And as the years passed from 2003, we reached 2013, 10 years or 12 years and, you know, later, uh, a lot of those people had already passed on. Wow. So there were, you know, like very, very prominent faces in the crowd, very known faces in the crowd, very um, uh, dedicated to the Fadu faces yes. in the crowd that had already passed on. They were all senior citizens and they were all leaving. So that's what struck me in the year 2016. And I felt that there was a need to take the Fadu now to another audience in Goa yes. that is not a usually a Fadu audience, no. is not an audience that speaks the language or has any um, any link with, as you say, the Indo-Portuguese culture of Goa, but are music lovers yes. and have traveled the world. And if they can like, Korean music or Arabic music or African music, none of those languages they speak. Yes. Why not the Fadu, wow. you know? So that was the idea. So in 2016, I had a project called Fadu in the City, where uh, three musicians with me, uh, we had 10 concerts. And the whole idea was to take Fadu to venues and audiences that had never experienced the Fadu live. You know, so from there, I think uh, we moved very smoothly into the next project, which was Fadu the Goa, uh, is where we teach the Fadu. So this happened because uh, Mr. Ravi Nishchil from the Taj, he was the GM in Agwada at that time. Uh, he attended and he said, we would like to support this, you know, movement of the Fadu. And under their um, uh, CSR, we had uh, the opportunity to have these Fadu classes. So we had batches. So now what happened was all of a sudden I had to uh, teach Fadu yeah. um, formally, sort of, and there was nothing to refer to. Okay. So nobody has taught Fadu yeah. here in yeah. Goa. Yeah. Nobody has taught Fadu. Traditionally, nobody teaches Fadu in Portugal either. Of late, there have been some classes and courses. Exactly. So, Fadu is a style that you learn by immersing yourself into that uh, form. You go to Porto. I used to go to Portugal every year by myself um, and go to these Casas do Fadu religiously every night. Uh, listen to Fadu, sing with them, learn, you know, so pick up all these nuances. Into, uh, then I have this group of friends, uh, again, all senior citizens in Portugal who know a lot about Fadu. So they're like authors and musicians and composers and poets. And uh, so I would go to them every year with my little tiny notebook with full of questions. Why this? Why not? Is this? Is not? And then they would, you know, with all patience, find it intriguing that this little brat, for them I was a kid, yeah. uh, would come from the other side of the world yeah. to, you know, ask them so many questions. And sometimes they were baffled with some of those questions. So they would, you know, ask for time and go back and then get back to me with an answer. So that's how I learned the Fadu. But uh, um, so then I, for, the, for these classes in Goa, keeping in mind that majority of them were not going to be speaking Portuguese, were going to be people who had never really listened to a lot of Fadu in the past. Uh, I had to create a syllabus. Uh, so chapters and topics and um, things applicable to students learning Fadu in a country where you don't speak Portuguese as the first language. Yes. So it had to be that sort of, because the courses in Portugal are for people who speak the language, yes. who are already born and brought up there. So it's part and parcel of their own, uh, you know, so it's like teaching Bharat Natyam to a foreigner. Okay, here we understand a lot of Sanskrit words, we'll understand a lot of, you know, when, when the teacher tells you what is what. Yeah. But then to that person you have to under, explain the, the meaning of that concept first and then the execution. So, so that sort of, uh, keeping that in mind, I had to draft the syllabus. And it went off really well, better than what we expected actually. Um, we had a batch in Margao, 
of 35 students. Then we went to Panjim with 55 students. Then we went to Vasco da Gama with uh, 75 students. We came back to Margao, 35 students. And then the last batch we did was in Mapsa. We started with 86 students. So yeah, so it's quite a huge yes. uh, crowd. And a lot of our students picked up really well. Some of, um, proudly I can say that, some of my students have now uh, also joined me on professional platforms uh, and sung the fad. So it's, um, whether it's Siddhad Goa, whether it's Madhur Goa, whether it's any other fad concert, uh, you find uh, some of them do sing with me. Uh, but the idea was not only to create Fadu singers, the idea is also to create an Fadu audience. Yes. So not everybody that came to the classes sang well yes. and that was fine with That's us. Fine. Because we were not only teaching them how to sing the Fadu, we were also teaching them all the theory yes. about the Fadu. So tomorrow if somebody came and sang something in Goa, there would be an audience who would be able to understand whether it is a Fadu or it's not a Fadu. And the, the whole idea was, Fadu has been in Goa for so long. It's a style of music that has lived here for so long. It shouldn't go. It shouldn't die. You know. So the whole idea of Fadu the Goa is to protect and promote, preserve the Fadu in Goa. So that's and spread it, spread it, and spread it all as over. Many yeah, as yeah. Do people just say? Uh, sing us a song when they meet you <laughs> because I'm going to request you if there is that, that one popular tune that just kind of is buzzing in your head constantly at the moment could you possibly sing two lines of it for us we'll just be so thrilled so this is one all-time favorite father of mine that uh, I like to sing um, it's called Freya Claridad um, no meio da claridade Daquele tão triste dia Grande, grande era a cidade E ninguém me conhecia Grande, grande era a cidade E ninguém me conhecia Acordei e a claridade fez-se maior e mais fria. Grande, grande era a cidade e ninguém me conhecia. Grande, grande era a cidade. You actually tend to take a deep breath when you hear, when you are listening to you. It's amazing. Thank you. I just took this amazing breath of music, <laughs> freshness, whatever. Thank you. Uh, it's it's magical. Tell us about Sonia Shersat's value systems. Oh, value systems are things that you pick up through your childhood and it comes a lot of it comes from your parents a lot of it comes from the environment you are brought up in so me being brought up uh, in a in a town um, to very hard working parents so my father was a self made man he was a doctor with no doctor prior to him in the family so he also had to uh, you know build his own way uh, so i guess that helped me because we also don't have anybody in music in my family. Okay. So it was like a new field, a new uh, a, a area. Uh, he had to face a lot of challenges. He started his own private hospital when private hospitals weren't a uh, thing, you know, in the late 70s. Um, and he ran that hospital single-handedly. So whether it was admin or, or getting the linen or actually dealing with the patients and treating them. Uh, so that is, so there's a lot of uh, dedication that I learned from him. Uh, when you get into something, put your heart, mind, soul, assets, money, everything into it, you know, and uh, give it your best shot. There's no scope for what ifs. Yes. So um, he, that was one thing I learned from my dad. The other value I learned from him was to be sincere. Be sincere to your work. 
don't try to find shortcuts don't try to cheat don't try to uh, give a false impression which unfortunately today is in every field whether it be uh, our field of music or his field of medicine it's there everywhere unfortunately but uh, that was another value so uh, many a times you know the social media nowadays has taken over our lives where uh, great reviews are written but then the review is written by that person itself so how much do you how much can you give uh, trust or value to that uh, perspective uh, as compared to something written by uh, somebody else like a journalist or a critic or uh, uh, somebody in that field you know so that is what we really have not uh, we've sort of lost our um, lost our focus on but uh, apart from that a lot of show or pomp or uh, uh, was never part of his life and therefore i also try to see that it's not part of mine um, from my mother i learned the value of being happy and content with whatever you have um, so i remember uh, so my parents is a mixed marriage my father was a hindu my mom is a roman catholic from both from goa so of course they had a lot of challenges to get married in the 70s mid 70s uh, but they did that and at that point of time my dad was all by himself running a hospital in a in a village in maharashtra called kudal and uh, so it was a very simple house so my mom always told me stories of how she in that house didn't have a sofa so her sitting room were like few chairs there wasn't even a tea poi because this man was living a bachelor's life right although he was a doctor he was dead more in the hospital than his house so how she had found some boxes and covered it and made into a tea poi and she said nobody would guess what was underneath that because it was so well decorated and you know and she, that's how she built her life and my dad built his um she was always happy with whatever for example when uh, in the portuguese days my grandfather was uh the secretary of the fazenda and he used to be transferred so at points of time they they were transferred and there was no maid in the house uh end result was my grandmother used to keep my mother back home from school so and my mom was happy about it so she would like so i've got an aunt who would complain the elder sister would complain why are you keeping her back home send her to school and my mother would be the one going la 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 at home you know and happy because she didn't have to go to school yeah. so she was okay so that is another quality i learned from my mom and be happy and content with whatever you have wherever you are in whichever situation i think that's that's the only way you can face the situation otherwise you will uh, you'll be miserable uh the values i learned from ponda the town that you know you still know people um you you still share in the happy and sad moments of your neighbors uh the town where you uh, have you know a lot of importance given to reputation so these are values i learned from my town and the people of my town so i have also very very strong um uh i give a lot of importance to these points so as an artist as a singer on stage i may be a singer i might i'm there for my voice i'm there for my talent that god has given me and the hard work i've put in which is in my singing i'm not there for anything else so the way i dress or the way i carry myself um is also part of my reputation so things like this so i guess all these things become a part of your value system and that's how your values are uh, inculcated yeah thank you I would love to ask you about uh, something that's a little tricky. Now, uh, as women, I think again we have a very different identity, and I'd like you to tell me about how has it been uh, personally and professionally. Uh, what do you think it it has been for you about being a woman? Uh, what would you say to other young women out there who are also trying to? build themselves find their way out there and say that this is who i am this is what it means to be a woman um it's funny actually <laughs> i throughout my study uh student life or my career i never thought of myself as a woman yeah. you know yeah. uh and that i was any different from the four guys on stage with me playing instruments because at that point of time i was a musician i was an artist just like them um when i interact with people um 
it's very uh, rare that uh, the gender concept comes in my mind. So for me, whether you are a, a gentleman or a lady, a boy or a girl, uh, as far as your work is concerned, as far as your studies are concerned, it doesn't matter. Uh, gender has nothing to do with your talent, it has nothing to do with your studying, it has nothing to do with your profession uh, in general. So it shouldn't affect you at all. So whether you are a, a man or you're a woman, um, if you are a singer, it's your voice. If you are a painter, it's your art. If you are a doctor, it's your, it's your ability to heal people. And that has nothing to do with your gender. So when people, so that's my take on it. But the person across the table sometimes, you know, doesn't think that way. And when that person starts treating me differently just because I am a lady or not a man, uh, I don't understand it. I, I just, I fail to understand it. Um, if they treat me differently, in a good way or a bad, uh, I find it strange. I find it uh, uh, sometimes belittling. And, uh, and therefore, then I might even step back and, and move away from that uh, uh, circle. That mindset. that mindset, no, that whole situation. I might stop working with that person. <laughs> I'm that sort of a person. Because um, I guess it's my parents. They brought my brother and me up together, the same upbringing. If he learned to swim, I was also thrown in the lake to, to learn in the in Nagishi Tali in front of the temple to learn to swim. Uh, if he was on a cycle, I was on a cycle. If he was playing badminton, so was I. If he was traveling abroad for a JC conference, so was I. So they never, you know, uh, made any difference. If he was driving, so was I. So, um, so there was never a difference made by my parents. So it, that's what. So when people ask me this question, I'm a little, uh, I, I fumble because uh, it never comes to my, my mind, you know, that way. And um, but yes, I understand what you're saying, and I understand where you're coming from, because I have seen it happening also in my field. Uh, for example, um, lady singers, crooners. Uh, artists um, being treated in a very light manner. Uh, for example, very recently I, I faced one situation where uh, it was a group of artists and, uh, and one of the things that was expected from me was to, was to serve the coffee. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Which, which otherwise I would have done wholeheartedly yes. because I also love coffee and uh, you know but the, the, the request was made to me not because everybody loved coffee, yes. but because I was the only woman in that yes. room. And I declined. Yes, I declined it. So this mindset from a very modern, my age gentleman uh, comes in a very, uh, is a shocking thing. Yes. But, uh, but it's still there. It's still there. It's still there. One last question to you. Um, I also believe that we are what we do every day, not what inspires us once in a while. And it is those daily habits that make us who we are. I'd love to know what Sonia Shirsad does every day. <laughs> no, I don't have any fixed regime. <laughs> to make you the professional that you are, do you feel it's necessary to practice every day, to keep in touch with that voice that is so magical? What is it? Uh, some sort of practice, yes. Yeah. That would come in your preparation. Yeah. yeah. So if there is a, a new song that I have to do or a new a technique that I have to learn or a new type of uh, music that I have to work with. Yes, a lot of research, very important, a lot of research, a lot of practice. But, um, but again, as I said, it's not something that I do every day. Um, a lot of people ask me, what is the riyas that I do? What is the, the you know, voice training that I do? As I haven't trained my voice uh, formally ever, I, I'm unable to, to practice every day or, you know, do this riyas, so-called. Uh, but yes, before a performance or if I know I have to perform in whatever month's time or whatever, there's preparation. Yes, that is seriously done with a lot of dedication. Um, but otherwise on, a, on an average or uh, every day, no. I sometimes don't even sing at home. For days, yeah, for days I don't sing, uh, yeah, yeah. Alright, so you've given us again another interesting tip, you don't need to be at it every day, no. you know it's there, yeah. you believe in it, you have faith in it, but when you need to, you do you do practice. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with Pleasure. us on the show. You've Pleasure. brought in a lot of color, a lot of music to the show. Thank you. Uh, with your personality, you've lent the color, with your voice, you've lent the magic. 
Thank uh, we you. appreciate everything about you, Sonia. Thank you. Uh, uh, groundedness is a word that is that is very precious. To us, we understand it as goans. You have tons of it. Um, we wish you tons of success. We thank wish you, you a Nina. beautiful, beautiful musical journey ahead. Thank you. And thank you for being who you are. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much.